podcast powered by Slipstream Autosports. My name is Daniel, uh, but you probably knew that already. If you are new, first off, welcome. Uh, Let's Talk Motorsport is a is the number one hub for all your motorsport news and podcasts. Um, so feel free to subscribe and be sure to hit the like button if you uh, do enjoy this video or pod, wherever you're listening from. Um, so if you guys have obviously seen this channel before, you would know that we do make supercar podcasts. Uh, preview and reviews and a little bit in between but um, you'll notice if you do listen to our preview podcast we go through the news then I thought you know what because there's a month wait between each supercar round for some unknown reason um, I thought why not we do a weekly news segment just recapping any news that have happened in the week uh, whether it's big or small so uh, without further ado Let's get cracking. And before we get underway, like I said, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to like if you haven't yet and follow on Spotify and give us a five star rating. It will help grow the channel more. With that being said, we have also officially released our LT uh, uh, Let's Talk Motorsport website. So head to ltmotorsport.com for all your motorsport news. Uh, that's where I'll be using all of the supercar news today. So you can easily access that. The link will be in the description and show notes and so forth. So feel free to check that out. With that being said, let's get into the big news of the week. So obviously, um, the big news is that Jack Perkins will miss the upcoming Sandown round in the Super 2 category. Now, unfortunately, um, this is due to a rule change in the category, um, basically saying that any enduro driver or co-driver in the main game is required to race at least three Super 2 races uh, in that season before the Sandown race and Bathurst race. Perkins has only done Townsville. So unfortunately, he uh, simply isn't allowed and hasn't made the requirement to compete at Sandown this year. So obviously, this is rather disappointing because obviously, um, Jack was going to run that special yellow livery uh, to honour the 1979 um, Bathurst performance of his father. Um, and it was going to look absolutely cool. Um, and apparently last year, they're actually partnered up with Sharon Partners to have a two-race deal, so uh, Townsville and Sandown. But unfortunately, due to the new rule change, um, it's not it's not going to happen, unfortunately. And uh, the, what I'm glad to hear about, though, is that he still has plans to give... Uh, cherry ripes to fans um because originally he was going to do that uh with his car uh, unfortunately he can't do it so but he's still going to do it because he showed a photo as you might see on screen here uh he revealed that this is what 10 kilos of cadbury cherry ripes look like so there you go so uh, he the thing is with jack he is absolutely sensational and such a great asset to the supercar community who honors the history of the sport especially with his restoring um, program like with all the cars that he restores of his father's and stuff. It's really fantastic. He is such an incredible um, bloke overall. Um, but in terms of the rule, you're probably thinking this is, you know, why did they change it? It's simply because uh, it's to stop the likes of Jamie Winkup and Scott Pye. Uh, I know we're just bagging Triple Eight here, but uh, hear me out. This is this will explain it. Um it will stop them from just taking place in the Bathurst round for Super 2 um, to gain more miles and practice. Um, and it encourages drivers, encourages co-drivers to actually race full-time in the Super 2 category. So I do understand it. I understand their reasoning. It's just really disappointing to see uh, Jack Perkins, who purely went there just to honour um, you know, the history of the sport, and obviously it's what the fans want as well. He even um, applied to get, um, you know, get special permission to compete. Unfortunately, uh, that didn't work out. Um, but uh, it is what it is. Really disappointing. Let me know in the comments uh, how you feel about uh, this news. Do you want to see Jack uh, race in Super 2 Sandown? Do you reckon they should uh, give him permission? Or do you reckon um, he should follow the rules like everyone else? Let me know. In my opinion... Um, I reckon he should race. Um, it's just, it's fantastic. Plus he did really well in Townsville. He really gave it to the young guys. Uh, I, know, I understand that Super 2 is a young development sport, but we have seen the likes of Paul Dumbrell, for example, uh, really make a challenge for the young kids. And it, we've seen how well they've done 
uh, racing against him. So, yeah, exactly. So it also, in a way, it proves the Super 2 ra- drivers are ready. For example, Kai Allen, you know, he, he beat Jack Perkins, who's obviously uh, had plenty and plenty of race experience in a supercar. Um, it just showed, you know, it just helps boost their morale, I suppose. But uh, no, it'll be, it's very interesting. But uh, let me know what you think. Uh, next up is the news that uh, young gun Bailey Sweeney is returning to National Motorsport. Uh, the young TCR racer will race a Super 3 Image Racing VF Commodore at Bathurst this year. Uh, this is sensational news. I'm so stoked to hear this. Uh, of course, he raced uh, in the last couple seasons of TCR with Hyundai. Uh, unfortunately, due to budget reasons, he's had to unfortunately not do that anymore. And he's sort of similar to Zach Best. They've sort of disappeared in the motorsport world. So the fact that he's coming back now in a supercar of all things is fantastic. And with image racing as well, it's going to be awesome. Um, he's also going to be driving Job Stewart's VF Commodore that he raced last year, which was also used by um, Tony Aldino uh, back in May in Perth this year. So he's got a great car behind him. Uh, also adds another Super 3 car to the small, very tiny field. Um, so I'm very excited to see that. Um, he's a young, fantastic talent. He deserves all the best of luck coming his way. Speaking of Super 3, um, there's another addition to Super 3. Um, it's going to now be, a, well, technically in Sandown, it's going to be a three car field because Sweeney's only racing at Bathurst as far as I'm aware. But um, Stone Brothers uh, will, in a way, be making a return to Super 3 in the forms of their old Falcon. Uh, Now, the team isn't returning itself. Image Racing is going to be racing one of their old FG Falcons from Project Blueprint. Uh, They'll be racing it in Super 3 at Sandown. Uh, Victorian driver Antonio Meluso will be behind the wheel of that Falcon. Um, Now, he previously raced a Falcon similar to that in the V8 Touring Car Series. Um, So the fact that he'll be racing it in Super 3 is awesome. Obviously, like I said, it's always fantastic to see these cars return, especially Project Blueprint. It's also great to see Super 3 growing once again. Of course, this year has been extremely disappointing for Super 3 with only the two Nissans from uh, Matt White Motorsport. Uh, racing in Super 3. So it's fantastic to see, plus, of course, the news of Bailey Sweeney with the VF in Bathurst. Um, It's good to see another Super 3. But still, you know, 3 is nowhere near enough. Next up is just some minor news regarding drivers. Um, And this isn't necessarily supercar related. I just thought I wanted to shout this out because of the name. But uh, Marcus Ambrose's daughter, Tabitha, uh, will officially race in Formula Ford for the first time uh, later this year. Uh, she'll be racing in under the Border uh, Borland uh, Racing Development banner uh, with um, some Peartech colours, uh, which is fantastic because, of course, Marcus Ambrose, her father, um, is a two-time Supercars champion with the Peartech sponsorship. Uh, it's just fantastic news to see the Ambrose legacy carrying on. Uh, and of course, she recently raced at the Winkton 300 in a Hyundai um, Veloster uh, with Brad Gartner. And she also competed in the XL Series during the Victorian State Series at Sandown. Did fairly well as well. So uh, great to see uh, her have a go in the Formula Ford in the number six JPS car. Uh, great opportunity and great learning at curve for the young gun. Who knows? Maybe we'll see her in supercars, um, but definitely keep an eye on her. That's for sure. She, uh, who knows, might even be faster than her father. <laughs> Next up is a bit more news uh, for Sandown and, well, I guess for the rest of the year. Supercars is set to potentially have faster pit stops. Well, that's the goal anyway. Um, a Basically, a, uh, a modification of the fuel system. Uh, will be implemented hopefully from Sandown onwards. Um, Basically, a larger connected hose adapter has been designed to facilitate a quicker fuel flow. Uh, Supercars have also increased the feed hose diameter from 40 mil now to 50 mil, uh, which hopefully improves fuel flow from the tower to the single probe used for both refueling and venting. Yeah, so basically the change for the with the with the modification is to basically bring a empty tank to a full tank 
to down to only it should only take 20 seconds opposed to a minute so a massive massive change uh they've been working supercars have been working closely with dick johnson racing um to develop and test these components um so fingers crossed it will be ready for sand down but hopefully most likely be ready for bathurst at least and now, a um, couple big news. Uh, of course, Mark Dutton. There's been a, um, a a decision made after his incident with Thomas Randall at at uh, Tasmania. He has actually been reprimanded after the contact made with Thomas Randall. Um, now, that's no surprising. He clearly breached the rule uh, B six five one one, which states here a person must not intentionally make physical contact with another person except in self-defense. Now, Dado actually did try to defend this case, stating that uh, he was simply protecting his staff from violence. Now, understand his reasoning with it, with the fact that, you know, Randall had his helmet on, uh, so you didn't know what he was going to do. But in my opinion, that's just a lousy excuse because Thomas, if you know Thomas, he is very, very down to earth. So he simply just went to apologize now, everyone's saying that, you know, he, sh he has no right going in the garage. Yes, Dado had every right not to let him in the garage, but I think the point people are missing is the fact that he pushed him away. If he actually went around and actually spoke to him saying he shouldn't come in without the touch, nothing would have happened, right? And he would have nothing. This wouldn't have been investigated. The reason for the investigation is for the physical contact made uh, when he pushed Thomas Randall. So that is a clear breach of rules, similar to what happened with Barry Ryan, although that was a little bit worse a couple of years ago, Mark Winterbottom. Um, so it is what it is. Similar punishment, move on, focus on sand down. Just don't touch people. Simple. And uh, some last bit of news uh, is that, unfortunately, I know this happened a week ago, but unfortunately, Campbell Little um, has passed away after a four-year-long battle of pancreatic cancer at the age of 65, I believe. He was a true icon and well-loved in the supercar community. Of course, he uh, helped Craig Lands and Jamie Winkup um, win the Bathurst 1000 in 2006, that emotional one when uh, Peter Brock passed away. Uh, he will be sorely missed. Funeral will actually take place Monday, September the 2nd, um, so at the end of this weekend, um, if you guys... There's details over on Speed Cafe if you want to check that out. There also is a link to watch the live stream funeral there. Uh, he is he will be sorely missed in the supercar community, and uh, all of us from Let's Talk Motorsport uh, send condolences to his family and friends. So with that being said, that is it for supercar news, at least for this week. If you guys would like to see us uh, do weekly uh, news segments regarding supercars, do feel free to let us know. Uh, it's just another way to keep the supercar community going. And uh, during, especially when, you know, it is a month between each race, you, you kind of sort of run out of content. So instead of waiting for the preview pod, I thought we'll just do the news now. And plus with our announcement that we've released our brand new website, ltmotorsport.com, it's the number one place to check all your recent supercar news. It's an easy way for me to gather all the information and turn it into a weekly video. Um, hope, and I'm hoping... Every Tuesday, we'll see how we go. Um, but uh, if that tickles your fancy, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button and share it as well um, for more supercar and motorsport podcasts and news and stuff along your way. So, oh, and also, uh, just a quick plug if you guys are in Tail and Bend this weekend, be sure to head to the High Tech All Super Series at the Bend. Uh, both me, Alex, and Ivan will be there trackside this weekend at the Bend uh, in the Formula RX8 series. Uh, Ivan will be racing. It's going to be epic. I can't wait. So I hope to see you all there. If not, feel free to check out the broadcast over on SBS, KO, and Fox Sports. Uh, I highly suggest you check it out. I, I wouldn't miss it for the world. It's going to be action-packed um, all weekend long. So be sure to check that out. And that's all from me. Bye for now.